Hey everyone and welcome to the video. This video is part of a collaboration with Tim over at Kitchen and Craft. We both made our own version of a pork chop dish, so stick around to the end of my video to meet Tim and then you can head over to his channel and watch his full videos and let us know what you guys think in the comments. But anyway, let's hop back into the video. So when Tim brought up the idea of pork chops for our collaboration, my mind immediately went to pork tonkatsu, the fried pork cutlet served with fresh cabbage and that lovely tonkatsu sauce. But I also wanted to do something a little bit weird and a little bit out of the box, and tonkatsu was still on my mind. But not tonkatsu with an A, tonkatsu with an O, as in tonkatsu ramen. So my inspiration was to combine both dishes into one. The main ramen ingredients are the pork broth, noodles, the shashu pork, and some different toppings like a soft boiled egg. And then on the fried pork, it's really just tonkatsu sauce and some fried pork served with some green cabbage. So to actually incorporate the two, I decided to make some pork broth and incorporate that into my tonkatsu sauce, use the noodles from the ramen as a breading for my fried pork. And then instead of braising the shashu pork like they normally do, I'm gonna be sous vide it in a similar liquid. Last but not least, we gotta get a soft boiled egg in there because who does not love a soft boiled egg? This is my first time ever trying this recipe, no idea if it's gonna work. Hey, that's the fun of cooking sometime, so let's cook. So we're gonna debone our pork chops. The bones are gonna be used for the broth. And then we're also gonna cut off the excess fat, which we will render out into pork fat, which we'll use to fry our pork chops when it comes time. First, we just need to clean the pork bones a little bit. So we're gonna do this by adding water to a pan and then tossing in our pork bones. We're gonna bring this to a simmer and then some pork scummy stuff will start rising to the top of the pan. And then you can remove this with a mesh strainer or some kind of spoon. So after everything's removed and 15 minutes have passed, you just want to take out your bones and clean them off with fresh water and also remove the water from the pan. And then you can toss these back in and we'll start making our broth. I add garlic cloves, ginger, onion, and then just top this off with some more water. to put a lid on this and bring this up to a vigorous boil and you want to maintain this on a vigorous boil and the water will start evaporating but just pour water in intermittently over the course of three hours while that's happening we can render our pork like i said earlier so i cut these up into chunks and put them on the lowest heat possible and you can see it's just cooking in its own fat they're getting nice and crispy and all that gorgeous pork fat is left behind just look how crispy those little pieces are and then we're just gonna pour off the fat into a jar and this is gonna be used to fry our pork chops. Two and a half, three hours later, it's ready to pour off our broth. So I'm gonna just strain this through a strainer. And then this broth is gonna be used in our tonkatsu sauce. And it's also gonna be used as the liquid when we sous vide our pork chops. Here's a shot of the tonkatsu ingredients and we're gonna get this one out of the way first. So we're just gonna bring a pan over medium low heat and start adding our tonkatsu ingredients. So tonkatsu sauce is kind of like a westernized Japanese barbecue sauce. And the main components normally are some kind of tomato base, whether that's ketchup or like a tomato puree, and then Worcestershire sauce and some soy sauce. So I've mixed mine up a little bit. I'm also using oyster sauce, which you'll commonly see. And then obviously we're also adding in that pork broth to get our tonkatsu ramen component in there. 
and I'll try to give you rough estimations on how much I use of each ingredient, but this is really one of those sauces that I'm just adding my ingredients, constantly tasting them, and just trying to balance those flavors until it's something that I like. One thing that is important though is I generally wait to add my sugar to the end just because that is going to help balance out and give it some sweetness but only if the sauce needs it. And then as far as consistency goes we definitely want it to be kind of this nice pourable sauce. And then as far as extra ingredients I added a little bit of garlic powder and some sriracha just because I felt like the sauce needed a little bit of an extra kick and then that was my ideal sauce to use for this tonkatsu. And then you can just pour this into a squeeze bottle and store it in the fridge. This will last for probably several months in the fridge. Here's a clip of me forgetting to put the cap on the lid, so make sure you guys do that. Now it's time to sous vide these chops, and instead of vacuum sealing them, I'm just going to twist up the top and then use a clothespin to just hook it on the side of the pan and we'll be good to go. So all you need to do is just drop your pork chops in, and then we're going to come in with some fresh ginger, those green onions, and two crushed up cloves of garlic, and then pouring in that pork broth from earlier, make sure you save some. I mean, there should be plenty, you shouldn't use all of it in the tonkatsu sauce. And then finally rounding that out with a little bit of soy sauce. And then I'm setting my sous vide to 131 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's gonna set in there for 30 minutes at that exact temperature so it cooks all the way through. And then like I said, just roll the bag up and use that clothespin to pinch it to the side and no water will get in there. In the meantime, we can slice our green cabbage and take care of our noodle situation. So you wanna to try to get the cabbage that like haircut thin, ultra thin if you can, a mandolin works great for this, or a really, really sharp knife. And here's the noodle experiment, which I had no idea if it was gonna work, but I was pleasantly surprised with the results. So basically all you do is just toss in your noodles and boil them like the package says. And watch out for these little pieces of the seasoning packet because apparently they're pretty flammable. Fire situation quashed, now we just need to add our seasoning and boil these for around two minutes. And then we're just gonna drain them off into the pan and try to get rid of as much moisture as we can. Now we're gonna fill up a pan with just some vegetable oil and give these things a fry. And then like I said, I've never tested this before, so I did one little noodle at first and I was actually pretty impressed with the result. It was nice and crispy. And then we just dropped in a bunch of noodles at once, and these were actually really cool and were a fun part of the process. They almost came out like ramen noodle funnel cakes. It made me kind of want to put like confectioner sugar on them and try them, but aren't those shapes just so cool? To turn these into breadcrumbs for our pork chops, I just put them in a bag and then bash them up with a rolling pin. And then once they were crushed, I was honestly pretty impressed with how well these turned out and they're going to be a great breading for our pork chops. So now it's time to just assemble our breading station. So I've got the classic flour, egg, and breadcrumb set up. And then our pork chops are done sous vide, so just lightly pat them off and then run them through the flour, egg, and the fried ramen noodles. And these actually turned out pretty good too. I was surprised with how well that the breading stuck on there and overall was happy with the result. So we just finished these up and then before we fried them, I actually kept them in the fridge for about 15 minutes just so things could firm up a little bit. And then to fry these, remember that pork fat from earlier, we're gonna put it down in the pan and it's white just because it started to firm up a little bit, but as soon as you heat it up, it gets clear again. And then we're just gonna toss in our pork chops on both sides, just making sure we get a nice quick sear. You don't need more than probably, I don't know, maybe a minute aside, just so everything can get nice and crispy again. And just be careful not to burn it. I almost did it on these two, but they were still great and tasting and looking good. And just look at how nice and golden brown these pork chops got. I was super happy with the result. And then to assemble these bad boys, I threw them on a platter 
with some of that green cabbage, adding a little jar of the tonkatsu sauce, just as a nice aesthetic touch. And then those soft boiled eggs just boiled for five minutes, just dripping goodness. Then to eat this thing, just drizzle over the tonkatsu sauce over whatever you want. You could put it over the cabbage. I also added one of those noodle crisps and then just look at that soft boiled egg. And then to take a bite of this pork chop with the egg, with the tonkatsu sauce. This was a really, really good dish. And it does take a lot of time, I'm not going to lie. But I will say, this is one of the better pork chop preparations that I've had and have made before. I hope you guys have enjoyed the tonkatsu ramen pork tonkatsu journey. I'm now going to turn it over to Tim to introduce his dish. Hey guys, Tim with Kitchen and Craft here. And Ethan, thanks for doing the collab, man. Had a great time doing it and it was great getting to know you. So hopefully we can do some more collaborations down the road. So for my pork chop recipe, I went a more traditional route and I made a pork cutlet. So I pounded the pork chop down real thin and breaded and fried it, paired it with a summer tomato salad with a little tomato vinaigrette. The acidity from the vinaigrette in the salad helps to balance the fat in the fried pork chop. And there's also a little twist that I did in the recipe that you'll find out at the beginning of my video. So when you're done watching Ethan's recipe, come on over to my channel and take a look at what I did.